Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And this is a follow-up video to the one where we unbox the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, also known as the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. And in this video, we're going to set the device up. Now, the first thing we need to do is identify the SIM tray slot, which in this case is at the bottom of the device. Make sure to use the actual SIM tray hole rather than the microphone one. If you do put anything in the microphone one, you may risk doing away with the waterproofing of the device. Obviously, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE has an IP rating. It's one of the standout features of the device. Whoops. But what we want to do here is identify our SIM tray, take our SIM card and pop it in. Now, the model we purchased here in the UK direct from Samsung is a dual SIM device. So we'll take two SIM cards. Sadly, with the S21 FE, there is no microSD expansion, unlike on the Samsung S20 FE. Anyway, once you've put the SIM card in, make sure you get it aligned with the hole in the tray. It's time to switch the device on. So as you can see, Samsung Galaxy secured by Knox and powered by Android. Now Knox uh, is something that we've been seeing on Samsung devices for well over seven years now. It's their security suite and local chip for security. So now we have the welcome screen, lots of different languages going over there. I'm sure everyone will be happy with that. It already knows that we're in the United Kingdom. I'm going to select English United Kingdom. Go next. I trust Samsung. Those cunning Koreans have done a good job of TouchWiz and what is now called One UI, but I call it One Wiz, just to remind us where this operating system powered by Android comes from. Next thing we do in the setup is select our Wi-Fi network. Now, this is the first time I've typed on the device. Typing was fast, responsive, and the haptic feedback was, feedback was very, very pleasant. So we've connected to the Wi-Fi network, so we're now online. We'll go through the different setups that we have from here. So first one up is service provider setup. So when I say service provider, in this case, I'm using a SIM from a UK MVNO called Smarty. And Smarty runs on the 3 UK network. I chose this SIM card because, well, I do like Smarty as a network. And as a secondary SIM card, it's very affordable. At the moment, I'm using a SIM card from Smarty, which provides me with 3 gigabytes of data. And that costs £5 per month. It's less than $10 per month. So that's very, very affordable for 3 gigabytes of data. Anyway, what's happened here is the phone has identified that you have a Smarty SIM card and that there is a pre-agreed setup for the smartphone. So we'll have all the net appropriate network settings, but more under the hood and maybe a bit more in a gray manner, there's going to be pre-installed apps in place on the device. So that's why it restarted. It restarts and sets up those apps in the background. So I'm going to set this up and skip this process, I want to set up the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE as a new device, go through that whole experience from scratch. And to do that, I need to sign into my Google account. So this, in this case, I agreed to the Google terms and conditions. We'll go straight through that. I have used Google on devices quite a lot in the pre few year, last few years. I trust Google pretty much implicitly at this point. And when it comes to the ballot screen here where you have to choose your default search engine for your device i will choose google in this case so now we get to the fun bit where we have to set up a password or protection for your phone as it says here so let's start off with a pattern so that essentially provided me with two patterns to draw i did that they've been confirmed we're ready to go so now it's suggesting we do the Google Assistant setup. I agree to this. 
and we're going to allow that on the rock on the lock screen. That means I'll be able to invoke Google's assistant service without having to unlock my phone. So it's now getting the phone ready. There may be another round of settings to go through. We'll see. But first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE are very, very positive. This feels like there are very little, if any, bezels around the whole device. That dotch or that dot notch, that cat cutout for the 32 megapixel selfie camera is very, very nice. And the overall ergonomics of the glastic back that's premium aluminium or metal structure to the phone really feels like a premium phone. The fact that the back is plastic, I think, is actually a good thing. It makes the device lighter, in my view, more durable, and it makes it quite pleasant to hold. It's less slippy. So good job there, Samsung. The overall industrial and ergonomic design of this device, as a first impression, is very positive. So in the meantime, I'll let you know that Overnight, I did charge the device using a USB Type-C cable on a slow charger, though the device is capable of fast charging at 25 watts. Now, a lot of people may say that 25 watts isn't a lot, but Samsung have been very cautious with their fast charging ever since that famous Samsung Galaxy Note 7 incident, which still causes a bit of confusion. But anyway, the key thing is Samsung are very thorough in their testing and very cautious when it comes to battery technology. They want to ensure the devices they sell, such as the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, is safe to use in that respect. They can't really afford another flaming phone incident. Oh wow, we've jumped onto another please wait screen. Yay, we got there. So it's now suggesting we use Samsung Boost. I have no idea what that is. Samsung account. What could that possibly be? Yada, yada, yada. Okay then, so I'm signed into my Samsung account. We're all set up to go. Let's finish the setup. So this is the very initial setup before it lets you get into your home screen. And I have to say, they have really tuned that wallpaper to make this phone look and feel amazing. It really does look good. Right, first things first, we need to update all the Google apps and Samsung apps and all the bloatware that comes on this device. Let's have a little adventure in the Google Play Store and see what's already installed. There's obviously a lot going on, 38 apps updating. Google Drive, Google Photos, Google Duo, YouTube Music, Google TV, LinkedIn, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Outlook, Gal Galaxy Wearable, Smart Things. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Plus Facebook and a load of other apps. So one thing is for sure, we definitely don't have a lightweight installation. There's a lot going on here. So obviously there's a Microsoft folder full of apps. There's Microsoft Office, OneDrive, LinkedIn, and Outlook come already on the device. If we look in the app drawer, so you've got a load of game launchers, Samsung free, all the Google apps, all the Samsung apps, and the Microsoft ones. For now, it seems to be relatively lightweight. Let's see what other notifications we have. We're prompted to finish our setup. Let's see what is still missing here. I don't want to copy anything from another phone. I want this to be a new device. I'm sure we just went through this whole thing. Interesting, so as it flashed on the screen, we had Samsung Pay to set up and that's gone away. So that's interesting. We've completed setup and as we're here, let's see how the six gigabytes of RAM, which is the variant we have here, is performing on a very fast network. It seems to be updating things quite well. Let's stop apps updating. There's still 38 updates. And let's kickstart them again and see how we're go going. In the meantime, let's have a look through the operating system. So it is a uh, one UI or one whiz, as I like to call it. We have 
a pretty clean, a bit cartoonish operating system here. And let's see what we know about this phone. So I'll try and show you this, the information on the device. So this is One UI 4 based on Android 12. And the Google Play system update is the 1st of September 2021. So just roughly counting it, it's a five month old version of the Google Play Store. I'm sure that will be updating in the background now. In terms of the Android security patch, we're still on the November patch, which isn't very good. So let's see if there's an update for the operating system. Software update, download and install. So it's now connecting to the server, checking for updates, and we're up to date. So a new phone bought in January brings the November security patch. That's a little disappointing when it comes to a device which uses the S series in its moniker. What else do we know here about the phone? Let's see about the battery information. I've charged it, it's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. If it's anything like the one on the Samsung S20 FE, that should comfortably get me through a whole day of usage with no issues whatsoever. Let's check some details about the display. I do prefer a dark theme and adaptive brightness, great motion smoothness is high. Screen mode visit vivid. So edge panels, this is one UI feature that allows you to pull in from the right and have shortcuts. I personally don't like this feature, so what I'm going to do is remove that. You see that that's gone away. If I pull to the side, that's not there. Show charging information, great. Oh, a Samsung notification. Uh, how much I missed that or not. So let's have a look at the home se screen settings. So you can in One UI 4 do some customization here. You can decide grid sizes, the number of icons by icons, the folder grid, what happens if you go to the edge. In this case, it gives you Google Discover. I'm fine with that. And I think that's, that's everything. Let's have a look at the storage and memory options. Let's see if we can find our storage settings. So themes, home screen, lock screen biometrics and security, privacy, location, safety and emergency, accounts and backup, Google, advanced features. You can link the, your phone to Windows, call and text on other devices, Samsung Dex, Android Auto. So side key, uh, in this case, as far as I'm aware, there is none apart from the power button and the volume button. Bixby routines, let's try storage. Here we go. So in this case, it's 128 gigabytes of storage and it's not expandable with micro SD. This is the 699 pound UK pound sterling version of the device. And as far as I understand, this is the six gigabyte of RAM version. So very nice phone, very responsive as you can see and very nice. Now ergonomically it fits nicely in my hand. This is a 6.4 inch screen which is full HD plus one. That means it's a thousand and eighty pixels wide. It should be really good for consuming content and watching video. So if for example we decide to go into our Google folder, open YouTube and we switch the sound off just in case we get a copyright call. Let's find something with a nice high volume. So a nice uh, picture, such as we know the Syria highlights, do a very good job of making the most of screen resolutions on smartphones. So usually I watch the highlights in full HD on my smartphone. Okay, that's fine. It's guiding us through our setup, we'll skip this ad. And as you can see, colors are really punchy. Look at Napoli's shirt, look at Fiorentina's shirt. Really nice punchy colors there. And really good viewing angles as well. As you move the phone, you can't see much of a difference. 
The contrast ratio on the screen is really, really good. In my opinion, this may be the best screen I've used on a smartphone in quite a while. And bear in mind, my primary device at the moment is a Google Pixel 6 Pro. This screen seems to be much more vivid. It, in my opinion, is more smooth. I may be influenced by the fact that it's not a curved screen, it's just barely got a little bit of curve at the edges here. So it's a pretty flat screen and it's very, very nice. So good job there, Samsung. The screen is gorgeous. So I think that we've gone through things here. What am I going to install on this device? What are my main apps? So let's start with Amazon, provider of great apps. So first of all, shopping, very useful. Amazon Prime Video, definitely one to have on your device if you want to watch video. What else? Go back one. AliExpress, if you will are willing to wait a few weeks for delivery of items. Groupon, nah. Banggood, nah, maybe not. You might also like, definitely do like her. Amazon Photos, great way to, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber to have free photo storage if you are not willing to pay for the Google Drive and Google Photos service. Instagram, I do use that. Twitter, I do use that. Amazon Music, great music service. If you're a Prime subscriber, there's also quite a lot of free content available to you. Spotify, I will actually uninstall. Let's see how easy it is to uninstall an app here. But first, Audible. This is my favorite audio audiobook app. It works great. It works really well with Android Auto in my car and even over Bluetooth connected to the transit van I'm using to move home tomorrow. So let's see, Spotify. This is an app I really don't want because I don't use Spotify. Do you want to uninstall this app? Okay. And that was fairly painless and very straightforward. One thing I won't be doing on this device is using LinkedIn. There we go. So uninstalling apps is very straightforward in Samsung One UI 4 or One Wiz. Reminding ourselves that TouchWiz is something Samsung used to do and Ultimately, there are, is a great legacy of as TouchWiz still attached to One UI or OneWiz. So great, I've got my Amazon apps. Who else do I use a lot of? Google. So apart from the core pre-installed Google apps, there are a few that I use quite a lot. Obviously, Google Pay is the payment service app that I will use rather than Samsung Pay because I trust Google more than I trust Samsung with my sort of crucial payment data. Google Home, I will use that for some home automation. Assistant, oddly, it's not pre-installed. Google Translate, definitely need that to translate the spam messages that come through to me in multiple channels. Google Calendar, definitely one to have on the device. Google Drive, that's installed and up to date, great. The Gboard, I definitely want to use this rather than the Samsung keyboard. Google Lens, definitely. Contacts, oddly not installed, they want you to use. Samsung version, Google One, this is if you do subscribe to Google's extra storage and services. It allows you to visualize your settings, your allowances, your benefits, all in one place. Phone by Google. I will actually use this over the Samsung dialer. Google Meet. Useful for calls on the go. And more Google apps here. So Gmail. I actually want to look for Google Keep. So this is my notes taking app, which I use for taking notes, making lists, and sharing them with my partner, Candice. And for a little bit of light entertainment, yes, let's install TikTok. All that wonderful fast food 
videos that we see. Disney Plus will be using this to stream some video and see how the device performs in that context. Great, I think I've got all the apps I like and use on the device. We're still updating a few. Seven apps in progress. Wow, still quite, quite the queue of devices to go. So this is, Spotify has already been uninstalled. We're good to go. So overall, really nice phone, really good, fast, responsive, but you'd expect that with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset. Let's actually verify that. We're not sure if this is the Exynos version or the Samsung, uh, or the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon version. And to do that, we'll use an app called CPU-Z. This is a great app. It's not just for smartphones. You can use this, for example, on your PC to find out the details of your system, but more importantly, what actual chipset is available to you. So this is an example of the screenshots. So we've finally got round to having CPU-Z installed. Let's have a look at what comes up. No, this is, despite my reservations, a Snapdragon 888 chipset device. In this case, it's a five nanometer chipset with eight cores. And it also, in this case, has six gigabytes of RAM, which are usable 5,366 megabytes. The system is pretty smooth, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is at 90%, and lots of different sensors. So thanks very much CPU-Z for clearing that up. I think we can essentially wrap up this quick setup video for the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. We will be covering more content for this device in the coming weeks. So make sure you're subscribed to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We will also be covering some accessories and how-to videos on this device. If you don't already, please be subscribed and have that notification bell turned on so that you'll be notified when we publish new videos. We also cover, as well as purely smartphones, any gadgets or accessories we believe make the travel experience better. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching and goodbye from me.